So here we go. We're going to get into my favorite part of the week, start bench, right? Start bench, week one. These haven't even hit the website yet. They may by the time this show posts, but I'm going to try to put this video up tonight for you guys so you have a chance to watch it. But, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm more intrigued with the starts. So I'm going to go ahead and address the bench guys first, right? I'm going to go ahead and start with the most obvious, Florida Atlantic quarterback situation, right? It seemed like at the start of fall camp, it was down. It was a two-man race. It was Driscoll or it was Johnson, right? And then all of a sudden, we got a third man entered in the race, Daniel Parr. And now it seems like we got three guys in there. Well, you know what? We're, one, we're, we're game week now, and Kiffin has already been interviewed and said, you know what, I don't want to play three quarterbacks. He said, I don't want to play three quarterbacks, but you know what, you may not find out who the starter is until right before kickoff or earlier that morning. So my suggestion, keep your Florida Atlantic quarterback stashed, but bench him this week. Another bench this week, uh, Jacques Patrick, Cam Akers, running backs, Florida State, play in Alabama. Now, for those of you that have been following us now for a number of years, you know the routine, right? You know the routine. For those that are new, finding us for the first time, rarely do we ever start running backs against the Alabama defense. I have to tell you, if Dalvin Cook was playing Alabama, I'd start him. But they don't have Dalvin Cook right now. They have a two-headed monster that they're going to try to run at Alabama, and I don't know which one is going to produce. It's a crapshoot, guys. It's a crapshoot when you throw anybody against the Alabama defense from a rushing standpoint. I happen to think if Florida State is going to do some damage against Alabama, it's going to end up being with, with Nyquan Murray, with Auden Tate in the pass game. I'm staying away from the running backs this week. I'm staying away from Jacques Patrick and Cam Akers, running backs Florida State. Now, Let's go down to Texas, right? And first of all, before I go on any further, I li- you know, we're from New Orleans, guys. I'm from New Orleans. If there's one thing, I can certainly relate with what's going on in Houston right now. So while I'm mentioning the name Texas, let me just say, guys, uh, friends, neighbors over to the west of us in Houston, if you live close, because I know some of you guys are in Texas because I get emails from you guys, stay safe. I hope everything's okay, and we are thinking about you. And if there's anything that we, if there's anybody that knows about what goes on with you guys and what you all are going through, it's certainly us over here in New Orleans. So our hearts are with you guys. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, But Chris Warren, running back Texas versus Maryland. You know, I'm not saying that Chris Warren is a bust pick this week because he is going to get some carries, right? But Kyle Porter is listed as the co starter co-starter. And he might simply just be a better running back than Chris Warren. And I think he will be in the system. You know, it's not going to surprise me if Warren becomes the short yardage and goal line back, which would make him a TD or bus guy. And I don't know if I like that on my roster. I'm staying away from Chris Warren this week, unless I absolutely have to play him. Chris Warren is a week one bench for me. Now, two names that are sort of 50-50 on my list right now. Kyle Hicks, running back TCU. They play Jackson State. I love Kyle Hicks this week. There's nothing not to like about Kyle Hicks. The guy can do it all. He can run, catch it out the backfield. He's productive as heck when he's healthy, right? But as of Tuesday, his chances seemed about 50-50 playing as he was a little banged up. He was banged up a little bit through preseason camp. And how? here's the question, guys. They say he's getting healthier. How much does TCU have to gain by playing Kyle Hicks? And then how much do they have to lose? By playing Kyle Hicks. They have a lot more to lose than they do to gain. They need him for the regular season. And I have to tell you, if you're in, if your league incorporates a penalty for playing FCS opponents, Hicks might be a wise sit anyway, because not only is there the fear of him sitting out because of injury, what if he only gives you one half, and that one half you're taking a 25% penalty against the FCS? You really need to consider sitting him in week one. And then the other player is Thursday night. I'm hoping we get some news on Simi Cobb's Indiana wide receiver against Ohio State. But the one thing, here's one thing. If the Hoosiers are going to upset Ohio State, they have to have as many weapons on the field. They need, Cobbs on, they need Cobbs on the field. But there hasn't been an announcement on whether or not he will face any type of suspension before the game. Well, you know, a disciplinary action for his arrest that he had last month. And We don't know. Is he facing the suspension of game suspension, a half suspension, any suspension whatsoever? I don't know if we're going to get any clarity between now and kickoff. I think you need to err on the side of caution. I don't know if I would have Simi Cobbs in my week one lineup. I may be leaving him on the bench this week. 
Now, we're going to get into the start guys. I got five guys, going to run them off. And if some of these are going to be a little obvious. I don't like to incorporate guys that are obvious on our start sheet, but we were high on them in the preseason, high on them through draft season, and we continue to stay high on them in week one. So I'm going to mention them. And here we go. Armani Rogers, the redshirt freshman quarterback at UNLV versus Howard, right? We mentioned in our preseason fantasy guide that there were three UNLV quarterbacks that combined for over 900 yards rushing last year. Imagine if that type of production comes from one guy. In 2017, Armani Rogers. We're sticking with one of our sleeper picks in, in, in week one. We're looking behind, for the red shirt, shirt freshman to operate behind an experienced offensive line. I think Armani Rogers, big week one, big, big 2017 season. We really like him. I had to put him on the start list this week. Another guy. I'm going to save this guy for last. I'm going to go down to Peyton Bender at Kansas, right? Now, even though it has not been formally announced that Bender is the starting quarterback, he's almost certain to be the starting quarterback, guys, and he's leading the Kansas Air Raid offense, right? Now, given his week one matchup against Southeast Missouri State, fantasy owners need to find a way to get him into their lineup, especially if you play in the two quarterback leagues. I think Peyton Bender can pay off for you in a big way. Week one start for Southeast Missouri State. Jamichael Hasty. Running back Baylor playing Liberty this week. Well, how much is he going to play? I, you know, that's the great question. I don't know. Sometimes with these matchups with Baylor, you only get a half. But some, that may, you know, with Matt Rule and his offense, that may all haste, that may be all Hasty needs. You know, when it was rep- now here's the thing: when it was reported that teammate Terrence Williams would miss time with a shoulder injury, Hasty shot up our list. We know that offense, right? Hasty shot up our list, and I have to tell you. The longer Williams takes to the longer it takes for him to get back, the more incredibly value Hasty becomes. I, I don't know if they're gonna need him the whole game, but they shouldn't. But he's a legitimate fantasy option in the Bears offense, and I think he's the number one offensive option in their offense. I think he's a start week one. I think Jermichael Hasty comes out of the gate with a tremendous week one performance. Jawan Johnson, wide receiver, Penn State, play in Akron. We've been on Jawan Johnson. All the way since the spring, right? He opened eyes in the spring. He continued to impress in preseason camp. So it was no surprise that he was listed as the starting X receiver when the depth charts came out on Monday. Now, think about the attention that Saquon Barkley is getting. The Heisman hype that this guy is getting. You don't think defenses are going to be keyed in on him? Jawan Johnson is that over-the-top threat, guys. He's that downfield threat. And I'm telling you right now, I'm looking for Jawan Johnson to be a nice surprise in 2017. I think he's going to have a big big year, and I think a lot of that has to do with the presence of Saquon Barkley in the running game and having a capable quarterback that could get him the ball on Trace McSorley. Jawan Johnson, week one start. And here's the final guy, right? I saved him for last because... If there was one guy that I told, it, it, they were like, should I target quarterbacks in, in, in the first round? I, at the end, I'm at the first round. I'm not going to get one of the big three quarterbacks. What should I do? Guys, sit back about four rounds and take Brandon Wimbush, Notre Dame. I've been telling people, I, you know, look, I have a lot riding on Brandon Wimbush in 2017. I'm not a Notre Dame fan, but I just have that feeling this year, you know, he is one of our wild cards heading into the season, and we suggested drafting him whenever possible. If you drafted him after round five, I think you got an incredible value. This may be an unfair comparison, but we pushed in as many chips on, on Brandon Wimbush this year as we did on Lamar Jackson in 2016. Now, I know. I know that's that's high that, that's 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 high praise, and I'm not saying Brandon Wimbush is Lamar Jackson, but guys, I just that, that's one of these guys this year that I just have a feeling on, and I hope when we're sitting back and evaluating the 2017 season, and we had him ranked 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 high on the list, you said Joe, you got it, you got it. I've admit I've I've been wrong plenty of times, but we do hit, we do hit often. 
and Brandon Wimbush is my guy in 2017. That takes us through everything, guys. Sorry to be so long-winded. I mean, I know here, and it's like I don't shut up. I get that. But guys, I could talk about this all night. Every time you see me on the show in the years past, a podcast, a video cast, I, there's not enough time. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to stop it right there, and I'm going to see you guys next week, week two. Enjoy week one. Good luck, everybody. Enjoy the weekend and the games.